I think you would be very surprised to find out just how much of God's word has changed. Just how much truth about God's creation in the world that we live in has been altered and we have been lied to about. All right, let's see it. So if ever you have wondered, did man really remove things from the Bible that are supposed to be there? What I'm about to show you should answer that question. 1000% yes. Ephesians 6, 12. I know you know this scripture. Well, you might not know it by the verse or the book, but as soon as I start to say it, I know that you've heard it. Check it out. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Basically saying what we are battling isn't man. It is demonic beings, entities, evil, powers and principalities. But what if I were to tell you, this isn't the original scripture. Mm -mm. Something's been removed. This is the original scripture from the Geneva Bible in 1599. The 1599 Geneva Bible isn't even the original Geneva Bible, which first came out in 1560, but it's a revision of the 1539 Great Bible, which itself is a revision of the 1537 Matthews Bible, which is a revision of the 1535 Coverdale Bible, which is a revision of editions of the Bible published by William Tyndall, who first published his New Testament in 1526. And that was the original English translation of the New Testament translated directly from Greek source texts. But Martin Luther's German translation came before Tyndall's English translation. And we can go back to Wycliffe's translation of the New Testament from the late 1300s, but that was based on the Latin Vulgate, which itself is a translation of the Greek from around 400 to 405 CE. And there are many other translations in between the Latin Vulgate and Wycliffe and then Martin Luther and Tyndall and the rest. Stop talking about an original version of this text when you're just talking about the earliest English translation you can easily find on the internet. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the worldly governors, the princes of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, which are in the high places. Oh my, oh, that's suspicious. That's peculiar. Let's read that part again. And I want you to pay very close attention to the placement of the comma. So we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, comma, and against the worldly governors, comma, the princes of the darkness of this world. Isn't that strange how somehow over time, they just so conveniently took out that part against worldly governors against worldly governors, comma, the princes of the darkness of this world. Not two separate things. That comma is describing the governors of our world as the princes of darkness of this world. Hmm. Shocked face. So two things I want to note here. First, this phrase that is being translated worldly rulers that this creator wants to present as the human rulers of this historical age and period is a Greek word, kosmokratoras, which means cosmic rulers. It does not refer to the world in the sense of this temporal existence. Second thing is, let's take a look and see where the change actually took place. So this is William Tyndall's 1526 New Testament, and this is based on Desiderius Erasmus's Greek edition of the New Testament. It says, but against rule, against power, and against worldly rulers of the darkness of this world. Now, worldly rulers there is that Greek word kosmokratoras, which means cosmic rulers. And then the darkness of this world uses a different word for world, aeon, which can mean eternity, it can mean a long period of time, it can mean an age, or it can be used to refer to this temporal historical period our own age and in that sense it is frequently translated world as in this temporal world in which we are living right now so originally we had two different senses of this word world and we did not have that comma and we didn't have a reference to the princes of the darkness of this world so now let's take a look at the coverdale bible but against rule against power namely against the rulers of the world comma 
of the darkness of this world. And this is using that final clause as a kind of apposition to the statement about the rulers of the world. Again, cosmocratoras refers to cosmic rulers. So let's look at the Matthew Bible against rule, against power, and against worldly rulers of the darkness of this world. So that's closer to what Tyndall had. Now let's take a look at the Great Bible. But against rule, against power, against worldly rulers, even governors of the darkness of this world. So we have that appositional sense of the final clause, but here we've inserted this word governors of. That's not in the Greek. But the Great Bible was produced based on editions of the Greek New Testament produced by an editor who went by Stephanos. And let's take a look at one of these editions. This is the 1551 version of Stephanos' Textus Receptus. This is the first edition of the Greek New Testament that adds verse numbers. But I want you to take a look at the Latin translation that is in the column next to the Greek. And I want you to note that you have mundi dominos and then a comma, and then you have this word rectores, which is in a different typeface. And then uh, tenebrarum seculi is what comes after. That is in a different typeface because it's not actually in the text, but it is being provided. The editor is adding it because they think it needs to be there for clarity. This is an editorial addition to the text that is not a part of the Greek source text. And the translations that are based on these editions of the Textus Receptus add that word even though it is not there. And so when we take a look at the Geneva Bible, what we see is that word the princes in italics. And that is how in the English translation they indicated to you that this is not actually in the source text, but this is something we are adding for the sake of clarification. The reality is that the Greek text refers to the cosmic rulers of the darkness of this world. We're still not referring to humans. We're referring to spiritual powers not flesh and blood. But because of the history of the development of the source texts that were used for these translations, we have some translations that separate those two phrases and then add in words to try to make better sense of these two phrases as separate clauses. So it is actually the Geneva Bible that is incorrect. That was a change from the earlier translations. And the more recent translations, are just changing it back to what is correct.